everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Katie and what I like to do is I like to draw while talking about goddesses and heroines from all across the globe. Um, if you guys like this kind of stuff, make sure to tune in every other Wednesday. I am going to hopefully, I'm hoping to be able to do this every week, but for now it's a little hectic. So every other Wednesday is what I'm comfortable with. So this week I was kind of wrangled into doing more of a creature. It wasn't really a goddess or a heroine, maybe at some time it was. Um, I've also been asked how I decide to do all of these things, especially since it's a little random. And I'm going to share my big secret with you. So I take usually this a book, and it's usually this glorious book by uh, Patricia Monaghan. And uh, what I literally do is I flip and I close my eyes and I point. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not even joking. I'm totally serious. That's exactly what I do. But the thing is, uh, some goddesses do need to be connected together. Some things are just like too complicated and we just have to stick around for a little bit. Which we saw last time with Anna, Anakin and Cetus, they had to be together. I didn't want to really jump around. So uh, that is the big, big secret there. Surprise. But randomness is kind of what led me to this strange but legendary creature the Bush Chromutter and her Moose Fraulein, or you can also call them Bush Fraulein or Fraulein. Um, my German's not the best, I'm sorry. But uh, so that's exactly what we're going to be exploring today. So let's begin. For those of you who are unfamiliar with Germanic mythology, a lot of it stems from Norse legends. Yes, our favorite bro dudes in the whole entire land. But the unique thing about German mythology is that it can be split into three categories. We have Norse mythology, Anglo-Saxon mythology, and Continental Germanic mythology. All of these can be found in Germanic paganism altogether. The Germanic peoples underwent gradual Christianization in the course of the Middle Ages. This is around 476 AD or 5th century to 1000 AD or 10th century, resulting in a unique form of Christianity known as Germanic Christianity. This was a bit of a blend of paganism and Christianity. Then good old Charlemagne came and nipped that witchcraft in the butt. He said convert or die actually, just so you know. Even though they were totally Christian, he did not kill the stories. Many stories from pagan lore became integrated into folk tales throughout Europe. Lots of these were passed down orally over the generations. You know, grandmothers, wives' tales, those kinds of things. This is where we have the famous Jakob and Wilhelm Grimm come in. They were the ones who were able to write these morphed myths into one novelization of the famous Grimm's fairy tales. They were not the only ones that did this, but that is one of the most recognizable group of mythologists. Now we have everything in one place written down. I understand this was a bit of a bastardization of German history as it relates to mythology, but we could go on for hours. I want to talk about the Bush Frauen and the Bush Kromutter. The Bush Kromutter and Moose Frauen, also known as the Bush Frauen, are said to have lived near the Sale River, or Sale. She appears in folk tales from regions Thuringia, Saxony, former Silesia, and former German speaking parts of Bohemia. I'm showing you a modern map. 
but this is approximately the area you will find her folk tales. Some people say that the bush women lived alone in the woods. They would seek male mates, but disappear after lovemaking and would never share their magical knowledge. I wonder if that was part of their lure was giving insights on magic. They are described as being short, golden-haired, and shaggy-skinned, probably from all that moss on them. They had pendant breasts and hollow backs. Ugh, yikes. There are also theories that they are covered in green moss. But their skin looks a bit gray, and they have a lot of hair that looks more like lichen. Their arms and legs look like knotted maple bark. They would live in hollow trees and follow three rules. Never use caraway in baking bread because the spirits cannot eat it. Two, never peel bark off trees because you're hurting the poor thing. Three, and never tell your dreams. Another little quirk is that the bushfrauen dislike you counting dumplings while cooking. Shame on you. Just make and devour them all. I do. When these little ladies were happy with you, they might reveal secrets about herbal healing and make plants grow with their dancing. They would also give out balls of yarn that might turn to gold. People considered them part of the fairy realm and they were dedicated to the forest in general. The bush grommeter or the shrub grandmother in many tales is said to be the moss women's queen or even mother or just a more powerful shrub moss lady. She has mossy feet and was always tended to by the bushfrauen. She was a white-haired elf-like creature, and this seems consistent in all myths surrounding the shrub grandmother. The bush chromater is a forest spirit living in the deepest woods which shows herself to humans only once every a hundred years. She is like super duper old and her appearance reflects that. Imagine basically a little moss hag and that's basically what she is. One thing that is noticeable is she has staring eyes and she's really wrinkly. In some legends, she is sometimes said to have an iron head. I'm not entirely sure what this means. This could have been a Christian influence on the more pagan creature because I'm imagining maybe horns. Her white hair is messy and full of lice. Her hands and feet are overgrown by moss. I imagine this is why she tends to hold a gnarled stick in her hand. I doubt she can move otherwise. She has a tied apron on and carries a basket on her back. The bush chromater manifests herself in different natural phenomena. When the mountains are, quote, smoking with fog in spring and autumn, the old woman is said to be cooking. As most fairy creatures in folk tales, she is a chaotic, neutral character. She can be a nice lady if she wants, or she can be a frightening, malevolent spirit that scares children away from forests. It really depends on her mood. One thing she really enjoys is if people comb her crazy ass hair. If they do decide to do it, she gives them a never-ending clue of yarn that will later become gold. But here's the catch. That's really hard to tame the bush chromater's mane. Her head is as cold as ice, which can lead to freezing the helper's hands. 
And you don't want to look miserable either, because she doesn't like sneerers. If you look at her in an ill manner whatsoever, she will breathe nasty illness on you that will result in a rash. In some tales, this lady is so dexterous, she will sometimes perch on you and give you even more nasty ailments. But in other tales, all of these bushfrauen can heal plagues, so they have the ability to cure and commit wounds, essentially, ailments. Lots of times, ugly, creepy creatures get the short end of the stick in folk tales and end up evil. In some myths, the bushkromater will actually attack children who pick berries or steal milk from herdsmen's cows. Oftentimes, her story was told to stave children away from the forests. Accompanied by her daughters, the shrub grandmother roams the countryside in holy nights. At those times, she travels in a little cart or a wagon, and people tend to stay out of her way. In Scandinavia, these bushfrauen appear as skokstra, which is crazy because skokstra were little, beautiful forest women who actually seduced men. They appear like women from the front, but seen from behind, she has a hollow back and a tail. If these guys followed them into the forest, they were good as dead. If the man was a hunter, he may be rewarded with good luck in the hunt. But if he were unfaithful to the Skokstra, he would be screwed. Numerous accidents would befall the man. Another theory from mythologist Ludwig Vestein declared her to be identical with legendary creatures such as Holda or Bertha, which were interpreted as ancient goddesses at the time basically on the same level as the historically recorded Germanic goddesses. And since we did mention these two, that's who you can anticipate we will be covering for the next month. The Bushfrauen were often, but not always, the object of the wild hunt. According to folklore, in order to escape the hunt, they enter the trees that woodsmen have marked with a cross that will be chopped down. So some of the things that I did for the Bushkromater or the Shrub Grandmother was I definitely wanted to keep her very light hair and I wanted it to be somewhat messy. Another thing that I wanted to do is try to incorporate as many features in the folktales as possible in one place. It's probably because I watched The Witcher recently, but I definitely wanted to incorporate the marking on the tree 
for preventing the wild hunt from finding them. Another thing I wanted to incorporate was her staring eyes and she might be prettier than I had originally intended, but that's okay. I leaned into her more fairy aspects. It's something I personally like. All of the bushfrauen, they're all fairy-like creatures. I probably could have spent more time making them more wood-like, but I wanted to kind of make them all a little bit of a horde of adorable old ladies instead, kind of surrounding the bush chromatter and getting her to safety essentially. I spent a lot of time on the moss. As you could tell, I get really in the weeds. But I also wanted to incorporate the golden yarn. And I also have one of the little bush frauen eating bread. One of them is tending to her hair. And then the other one, she's sitting there lazily. They're glowing with a green hue to kind of symbolize some sort of earthly magic or even some healing properties or depending on your perspective they could be illnesses. Originally I had them overlooking a ridge but then I changed my mind. It felt off so I had to redo the whole thing. This is very different than my previous paintings. This is definitely more painterly, whereas the other two were more design oriented. So I might change up my style every once in a while, but I felt that this one required a little bit more of a painterly style. I hope you enjoy. So as you can see, the legends behind one creature can change over very long periods of time. Certain aspects are going to contribute to that evolution of the myth. We don't know. It's possible that the Buschkromatter might have been a prehistoric German goddess, like some big, amazing, or fearful creature. Perhaps that's true, but we know now that it's possible she could have been degraded into this tiny little shrub evil sprite lady. Uh, we just don't know. And a part of that is because there's a lot of missing documentation or there was no written language. Everything was passed orally and there was a huge span of time. And that kind of is the contribution to the shrouded mysteries behind Scandinavian myth. That's just something that we're gonna have to either deal with and we'll never know about, or maybe we'll unravel some things, dig up some things. So I know I said that I was gonna do Holda and Bertha for next month, but I lied. Uh, this is because I was doing a little extra research on them and I realized they are perfect for Christmas. Imagine a female Krampus. I'm so excited, but you guys are gonna have to wait a full year and I'm super sorry about that. But we're gonna be doing a Tibetan Buddhist goddess instead. 
Her name is Mio Langsma, and I'm really excited because I've always wanted to look up Buddhist mythology for a very long time. I'm not 100%, I, I haven't studied a lot of Indian and Tibetan and Buddhist and Hindu mythology in general, the whole area. And this is just something I'm so excited to explore. And I hope you guys are too. If you guys like my channel, make sure to like and subscribe on your way out. It really helps me. It's a great support. Um, if you guys want to check out more of my art, I do more than just goddesses and heroines. I like to draw all kinds of stuff. Check me out on TikTok and on Instagram and on Facebook. I also am starting a shop at katiedraws.com. All of my stuff is at Katie Draws, so come join me on there. I'd love to see you guys join the conversation. If there's something you want me to explore, let me know. I am more than happy to do that. Thank you guys so much. I will see you in a couple weeks to talk about some Tibetan Buddhist history.